Hi, today we're going to work on graphs of sinusoidal functions, especially the sine function, and we're going to learn to identify the period and amplitude. So the uh, graph that we're going to work with today is y equals 3 sine i of x. So the first thing to do is to identify how the sine function looks like. So the sine graph, you can see, is in the specific shape. Um, 0, 0 is where it starts, right in the middle. It goes up to 1 at pi over 2, goes back down to 0, goes to negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, and ends at 2 pi. So I say n as an end of the first cycle. Uh, before that, the same shape repeats, and after that, uh, it repeats. So this sinusoidal graph actually uh, goes on continuously. There's some specific points, um, values I want to highlight. So we call the amplitude the distance from the middle line of a graph to the peak, okay, uh, top or bottom. You can see in the regular sine graph, the amplitude is 1, as in the distance is uh, from the midline, 0 to 1 is 1. But there's also what we call the period. I, I talked about how the graph repeats itself endlessly, okay? So we want to measure how long one period takes. So from 0 and ending at 2 pi, so we call the period of the regular y equals sine x graph 2 pi. So let's see how it transforms as we change the numbers in the equation. So the first is what happens when we have 3 in front of the sine x. Okay, so you can see the blue graph is y equals 3 sine x. The red graph is the original y equals sine x graph. Um, and what happens to the amplitude in the period? You can see that all the points have now multiplied by 3. So the, what the point was at 1 has now multiplied by 3 and uh, is now at 3. So every point, 0, 0, doesn't change. But every point is actually 3 times larger than itself, even the negative points. So how does this change the amplitude? So you can now see, now see the amplitude has also stretched by 3. So it says from 0 to 3. So that's why we say the amplitude is equal to 3. So now you can see that the period has not changed. Um, the start and beginning, uh, start at an end of the graph, starts at 0 and ends at 2 pi. So the period hasn't changed. So I want to point out a number in front of the equation of any sinusoidal function, whether it's sine x, cos x, tangent actually represents a vertical stretch or compression, right, if the number is less than 1, in between 0 and 1. Um, so the placement of where the number is actually has a lot of information telling you what kind of transformation is occurring to the graph. So the second number we want to deal with is the horizontal stretch. So what happens when we put the 5 in front? So we're going to keep the 3 sine x. So that's the blue graph. The original graph is the red graph. But the green graph is actually the graph of y equals 3 sine 5x. So you can see there's a few more cycles occurring um, before 2 pi ends. Okay. So how does this change our numbers, amplitude, and period? So you can see the amplitude remains the same. It still goes from 0 up to 3. So that's the peak. But now the period has changed. So the period for one cycle, remember one cycle is the sine graph starts in the middle, goes up to, to peak, goes down to the bottom, and ends right here. So that's one cycle. You can see denoted by this arrow. So what happens is when there was five, okay, there's five cycles within the same period as a regular y equals sine x graph. So we say the period is 2 pi over 5. You can also just look at this distance. But one way to do it is take the number 5 and you take 2 pi divided by it. Okay? So we can see how um, now this is a horizontal compression, not a stretch, um, of the graph. But again, so the number placement is very important. So the number in front usually tells you how it stretches and compresses. The number in front of the multiplied to the x is a stretch or compression of the graph. Okay, so hopefully this example helps you understand a little bit more about how the amplitude and period change as 
the graph is transformed. Thanks for joining us.